is the biggest teen idol of the 21st century. You've got Beatlemania, you've got Bieber Phenomenal. Bieber Beatlemania, like, I mean, girls falling all about the place, it was, it was crazy. With millions of albums sold worldwide, he's now one of the most popular stars in the history of music. One billion hits on YouTube alone. He would listen to things on the radio, and then he would just go away and get the keyboards and just work out how to play it himself. Incredibly, Justin is now one of the biggest hitters in social networking, with more followers than most world leaders. He was the most followed person in the world, even more than President Barack Obama. People follow Justin Bieber on Twitter, people follow him on Facebook. Yes, my fans are amazing. Tell them I love him so much. The youngest male solo artist to top the Billboard charts since Stevie Wonder in 1963, he's now quite simply a superstar, following in the footsteps of his legendary hero, Michael Jackson. Justin absolutely adores Michael Jackson. Justin was watching Michael Jackson, and he wanted to be like Michael Jackson. I think anybody would, would want to be as, as great as Michael Jackson. He's the top icon. In it. He's the kid who came from nowhere, who's now known everywhere and his music is constantly evolving. Justin's story is the most incredible story. His rise to fame has been so meteoric and so fast. Justin Bieber is the biggest pop star on the planet. is no longer just a teen idol pop star. His music now embraces R&B and even rap, as he showed the world on his recent album, Believe, and hit single, Boyfriend. Believe is definitely a little different. Um, it has some of the same sounds, but it's also um, a more mature album. Um, you know, I'm growing up as well as my fans, um, and I think it's it's time that you know I, I add something new. And so I think that um, with this album, I want to try to get more fans, older fans, you know, guy fans, girl fans. I want to just you know have um, just grow. Swag, swag, swag. On you, tell them by the fire while we eat fondue. I don't know. I try to find the right writers and the right producers to, you know, help me. You know, if I like a sound or if I like, you know, a song, you know, I'll be like, I like this, but I want to make it different and better and and add something new to it. So that's what I that's what I do. The music is brilliant because it's very modern. It's pop songs that got an R&B edge. So his music is made for radio all around the world. <laughs> And in reality, Justin recently came out as the steady boyfriend to beautiful actress Selena Gomez, making them the hottest couple in Hollywood. He's really into her. They're not, they're not shy about sort of showing that public display of affection, which most teen pop couples are. His fans remain ever adoring, and the Bieberettes, as they're known, adore the fact that their idol can actually speak to them through Twitter. Justin Bieber is really a creation of the social networking sites and the internet. He's really an internet creation. You couldn't have had a Justin Bieber even 10, 20 years ago. The internet has played a, a, a crucial part in Justin Bieber's success story from, the, from literally from day one. Today, Justin has close to a billion followers around the globe. And for the fans, the internet phenomenon has brought a whole new meaning to the term up close and personal. Justin's tweeting all the time. Social media is, you know, a massive part of why Justin Bieber is such a phenomenon. They've just been drip fed this young, cute boy. And I think the clever aspect of Team Bieber is that they've never let that go. They've never lost any of their YouTube fans. They still give them a little glimpse into Justin's life. Headed up by the man who discovered him, Scooter Braun, Justin's team have played the Twitter card to a T in marketing his brand. Ramping up the anticipation surrounding a new music video, he released no less than three teasers for the promo of his single Boyfriend, while tweeting, let's get the song back to number one worldwide on iTunes. Bieber's image has changed in the last two years. 
He's been collaborating with hip-hop superstars like Lil Wayne, and he's recently bought a new multi-million dollar home in Los Angeles. Justin tweeted recently, there's no better feeling than coming home to your grandparents waiting for you. No judgment, just pure love. And I think that really does genuinely sum up Justin's attitude to life. You know, he's this huge pop star now. He's got everything he could probably ever want. But really, it's family that is at the heart of what he's about. And family is the most important thing to him. He also participated in the Michael Jackson Memorial Concert, along with Michael's brothers and children, Paris, Prince, and Blanket. People are gonna remember him for his dancing, for his singing, but people have to remember him for being the man that he was. It's the kind of dream lifestyle that only a few years ago the young Bieber could never have envisaged, not even in his wildest dreams. I think the fact that Justin is genuinely a nice guy can be evidenced by the fact that so many other celebrities speak very fondly of him and really like him. Taylor Swift is a good friend of his, as is Rihanna. These are not people that would go out of their way to support a competitor in the charts unless he really was a genuinely decent guy. He is well liked by his peers and of course by his fans. Justin is somebody who gets how lucky he is, he gets how, how grateful he ought to be, and he's quick to show it. Justin Bieber may lead a superstar jet set lifestyle now, but his childhood was rooted in very humble beginnings. So how did it all begin for him? Justin was brought up in a pretty sleepy little town called Stratford in Ontario in Canada. Now the population say around 30,000 there. They are obsessed by their ice hockey, really typically Canadian. Deriving its name from the birthplace of William Shakespeare, Stratford was a cozy, pleasant town to live in. And Justin's upbringing was a religious one. I think it's really good that Justin has come from a pretty normal, ordinary background. Good Catholics. He's been well reared by his mother, who had him when he was really, really young. Justin's parents, Jeremy Bieber and Patty Mallette, had Justin when they were still only in their teens. For all the junk Justin Bieber takes about being like kind of this white bread, you know, really squeaky clean guy, his upbringing was pretty hand to mouth for a lot of time. You know, they lived in public housing. Um, you know, it's a teen mother working at like hotels and you know, office jobs and, you know, there wasn't a lot of money. His mum, Patty, was around 16, his dad was around 17, and his mum's parents were very influential in Justin's life. They were very, very religious. I don't think they were particularly happy that she got pregnant at such an early age, but obviously they had a great influence on Justin when he was growing up, particularly because Patty and Jeremy didn't stay together beyond about 10 months. He was the adored only child of this very tight, knit family and community of people at church who loved this little boy. There wasn't much money in the Bieber household, but their faith as devout Catholics had a huge impact on Justin. Justin Bieber has talked a lot about the relationship he has with God and the fact that he credits God for all of his success. This is a very grounded young man with a very strong and devout faith uh, in a higher power. Every morning as a small boy, Justin walked through the gates of the French-Canadian Jeanne Sauvé Roman Catholic School in Stratford. And he was taught everything basically in French, so his bilingual abilities, I'm sure, is a big hit with those female fans that know about it. But you know, as, as much as he was a grounded little boy, he was also a bit of a scrapper. Justin was a small kid and has talked about the fact that he was bullied at school. When he was pushed by someone, he pushed back even harder. You know, he didn't take anything from anybody, uh, even from a young age. And I think a lot of that is down to the confidence he had uh, growing up in this very uh, tight-knit religious community and home where he was told he could do anything, he could be a star, he was a great kid. And he really believed that and kind of took that mentality. He didn't let anybody push him around, and, and nor does he now. Anyone observing him as a typical Canadian kid playing ice hockey could never have predicted that he would evolve into one of the most adored entertainers in the world. If you're in Canada, you love hockey. I mean, it's like baseball, basketball, you know, football combined in Canada because as such, you know, as a, nas as a nation, they identify so closely with that sport. Justin has never been a particularly kind of big strapping lad. He was quite a small kid. 
but he has got nerves of steel and he grew up at school knowing his dad was a fighter and I think his dad kind of instilled that fighting spirit in him so he was determined never to be bullied nobody would push him around when he was at school and the fact that he threw himself into his love of ice hockey as well that really toughened him up because he was a very little kid but he definitely had this really strong fighting spirit. You know Justin has said that if he hadn't been a performer and, and musician, he would have very much liked to be an ice hockey champion. But what's indicative about that statement is the fact that even at ice hockey, Justin uh, felt he would be a, a superstar. He was never gonna be the kid who was satisfied with just being average or just being a normal um, person, a part of a team. He always wanted to be the best. He has an incredible drive and ambition. Whether he pursued ice hockey or whether he pursued singing, he was always gonna go to the top. But what made this young Canadian so different from the millions of other kids all around the world dreaming of fame and fortune? For a start, he had major talent, not only as a singer, but also as a musician and a dancer. But where did his gift come from? When you look at Justin Bieber's childhood, he's almost like a modern day Mozart from a very young age. He sort of seemed to be naturally inclined towards music. At two years old, his mom, Patty, bought him a set of drums. He started to play. Then later, she bought him a secondhand guitar. And eventually, he just started to play the piano on his own without any instruction or lessons. There weren't many luxuries in the apartment they had. You know, they did grow up in public housing. But, you know, some of the luxuries they, you know, could afford were all in service of Justin's uh, musical interest, whether it was drums, uh, guitar, a trumpet. She said that he would listen to things on the radio and then he would just go away and get the keyboards and just work out how to play it himself. He's never read music, he just says that he kind of feels it, it seeps through his skin. So it's just music is completely in his bones. The kid really wanted it. That's a big part of it, but he's also talented. If you look at, like, for example, the acoustic version of Prey. Part of that is to show, in this day and age, for artists, they have to prove that they're legitimate artists. And so being able to play drums and guitar, it gives him validity as an artist. What he liked to do was, you know, imitate Michael Jackson. Uh, Rock and Robin was the one song that he would sing in the mirror. And of course, you know, his mother would encourage that sort of thing, you know, not just, you know, as, as a way of expression, you know, not thinking, okay, this is going to be our ticket out of here. Listening to musical heroes like Michael Jackson in his bedroom, Justin dreamed of escaping his small town environment. Quite how he was going to do that, however, remained to be seen. Like a lot of young people, Michael Jackson had a huge influence on Justin Bieber, um, who seemed to be really drawn towards Michael's lyrics, Michael's uh, persona, and his success. Justin has numerous times said that he wouldn't be here, uh, the, where he is today, if Michael Jackson hadn't already gone there. I want to thank Michael Jackson, because without Michael Jackson, none of us would be here. So thank you so much. Between teaching himself guitar, piano, and drums, and already having an incredible singing voice, Justin started to busk in Stratford, growing more confident every day. You're my God, you're my you're the same. He may not have realized it at the time, but Justin Bieber had discovered his true destiny. Not surprisingly, it was his tenacious mom, Patty, who set him on the road to worldwide fame. As Justin's love and passion for music started to grow, his family obviously noticed how good he was, and it, he couldn't just be there performing to his mirror, he had to perform to other people. His mum then decided to enter him into a local talent show called Stratford Stars. It wasn't, it wasn't like your American Idols, it was obviously still in this very small town, but Justin was still very ambitious and he was determined that he was going to win this talent contest. The first sort of mark that he made was coming in second at a, at a talent competition singing a Neo song, So Sick. You know, it's not what you'd expect, like a blonde, blue-eyed little kid from Ontario to be singing so well. Coming second in the Stratford talent competition was not what Justin had in mind. His mum obviously felt so sorry for him that she just really wanted to give him that extra lift. And she said, don't worry. I've got some footage of you performing. I'm going to put it on YouTube so all the rest of our friends and family can see. And that's how he was launched as an internet phenomenon. 
At the time, Patty had no idea that posting clips of Justin on YouTube would lead him into musical superstardom. People often ask the question, what did Patty, Justin's mother, have to do with him finding global superstardom? The answer is simple. If it wasn't for Patty, his mother, Justin wouldn't have been a star because she was the one who allowed other people to discover him. So she put the videos up on YouTube. She was so proud. Her heart was bursting with pride and she wanted the world to see it. This is what's amazing about the social media now. They had no money, but they didn't have to employ somebody for hundreds of thousands of pounds to get him noticed. He all of a sudden was on YouTube and MySpace. Millions were taking notice of him, but the one who counted was Scooter Braun. He was friends with the likes of Snoop Dogg and Ludacris. He didn't, he didn't really kind of have any role apart from he just knew he, he was out to look for this big phenomenon. Scooter Braun actually stumbled on Justin's video clip by accident. It was an accident that he actually watched Justin's first YouTube clip. He was looking for something else. He was Googling or searching some R&B song and came up with this little feisty little boy, probably about 12 years old, you know, singing it like an angel and with these great moves. And he immediately began the process of trying to contact him. But to begin with, Scooter didn't find it easy to track down the kid from YouTube. And in fact, Scooter Braun didn't know how to get hold of him initially and actually found him on MySpace. And when he talks about it, he said he just had this gut feeling in his stomach. He was so excited by what he saw. He could see that there was this raw talent. Even though Justin was nothing like the Justin we know today, he knew that this was going to be someone who was going to be absolutely amazing. And he, he says that he actually likens it to falling in love. He says finding, you know, a, a, a superstar like that is like falling in love. But Scooter didn't have an easy ride persuading the protective Patty that her super talented boy could one day be one of the biggest stars ever in music history. His mom was, you know, in her, in her imagination, like in her best, uh, best laid plans, was there was gonna be a good Christian man and a good Christian label, and that was what, who was gonna find Justin and make him a superstar. But as we all know, you know, Christian labels are, you know, more of a niche sort of thing. You know, it can get you to a certain level, but certainly not to uh, the point where you have your own 3D movies. Patty was very nervous. So, you know, she very prayerfully considered her next move. She spoke with elders in her church and eventually decided to give her permission for Justin to go to Atlanta with her, uh, meet with Scooter, meet Usher, and explore some of the possibilities that lie ahead. Once Scooter got a hold of Justin, there was no stopping him. He introduced the 13-year-old kid to some of the biggest names in the music industry. Feels great. Scooter took Bieber to Usher, and Usher met Justin and thought, hey, I like this guy. But at the same time, they were talking to Justin Timberlake, and there was a bit of a battle on between Timberlake and Usher to sign him up. And in the end, Usher got him. He went to Def Jam. Basically, uh, um, Justin Timberlake and Usher both wanted to sign me, and um, we ended up signing with Usher at Island Def Jam. They both saw something in Justin that was kind of um, maybe unharnessed raw star power, and they both wanted that for themselves. Usher won in the bidding war, ultimately, and so he was the one who got to put together Justin's album. Usher and Justin Bieber are kind of a strange combination. You certainly wouldn't put those two together, at least I wouldn't. And yet, it's been an absolutely magical collaboration. Um, how was that jumping up on stage with um, Usher and Will I Am? It was great. Usher's amazing. He's my mentor, and it was great to be, you know, up there with him. As a teen idol himself, Usher was only too aware of the pitfalls that lay ahead for the young Bieber. Usher was able to say, I'm going to take this young kid, I'm going to give him all my experience, let's work together and make him a superstar. I think his team was very smart in the song selection. But probably the best thing for his popularity or credibility is the fact that he's um, affiliated with Usher. That gives him instant credibility in the Atlanta, greater Atlanta urban world. It was quite odd for the label Def Jam to take on Justin Bieber because he wasn't really a hip hop artist, but they saw something in him. They were able to tell their instincts told them that he was going to be huge, absolutely huge. And actually the world needed a Justin Bieber. 
I also think it doesn't feel like a white kid trying to sing black music. You know, it really comes to him very naturally. Um, and his songs don't sound like a ripoff of other things, too. Usher and Scooter's strategy for Justin was carefully mapped out, with YouTube being used as the major vehicle to promote the young singer. Quickly, Justin became a heartthrob, and the rest is history. Baby, 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 oh, the release of his debut single, Baby, proved a phenomenal success, outperforming everyone's expectations, and a star was born. Baby, his single from 2009. Could anybody have imagined it would go on to get 625 million hits on YouTube? Baby was obviously Justin's biggest hit. It was the song I think that most people remember him for. I think probably it was his most successful song because it was the catchiest. Everyone remembers that chorus. Baby, 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 oh. simple lyrics that use the word baby an awful lot of times, but you know, every young girl wants to be his baby. The opening lyrics are, you know you love me, I know you care. Pretty simple, not too deep, but every single girl wanted to hear it and believe that he was singing to them. You know you love me, I know you care. tune was catchy. It sticks there all the time. And ultimately, that's what really made him a huge star. It was a success for him on the charts all around the world as well, not just in America. So it was the song, I think, that will go down as the song which launched him, really. And he had the likes of, you know, huge pop stars like Rihanna wanting to be his mate. Imagine being Justin Bieber. Rihanna wants to be his mate. Some people voted it the most annoying video they'd ever seen on YouTube. But ultimately, people will always have a gripe. And you know what? There's a lot of jealousy around Justin Bieber because it looks like he got everything handed to him on a plate. But hello, you know, he's got the talent. At the time of Baby's release, Justin was still only 16. And thanks to the internet, quickly became a global star. Fame and fortune now also brought untold pressures on the young teenager. For adults, never mind children, global adulation is very, very difficult to deal with. Just look at the list. You know, Michael Jackson, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, Judy Garland, the entire cast of Different Strokes. I mean, what happened to these kids? They went off the rails because for one reason or another, when the fame got too much and the celebrity got too much and they weren't able to cope with being what the world wanted them to be, they fell apart and there was nobody there to catch them. And that, at some point, will happen to Justin. And what depends on whether he succeeds or fails in that transformation and getting through that will be the support he gets and the people who are around him. The pressure of fame recently reared its ugly head when Justin was involved in an altercation with a photographer while leaving a cinema in LA with Selena Gomez. If I had to guess, and of course it's predicting and who knows, you know, I actually think Bieber will probably be okay because of the fact, first of all, you can also look though at people like um, Hanson are a good example. They're people who went on to be fine. You think about who's the most viewed on YouTube, who's, the, who's got the most Twitter, who's got the most parody sites, who's got the most uh, anti-just, you know, celebrity sites. So the internet has, is central to the development of Justin Bieber's success and is central to the development of his personality and his celebrity, and his followers, of which there are now millions, over one billion hits on YouTube alone. What a way to find a star. He went on YouTube, and this guy, I think the person that has to get a lot of the thanks for Justin's success is this guy Scooter, because Scooter saw him on YouTube, and Scooter saw something there, and he's the catalyst in the whole success story. So I hope he's paying Scooter a big percentage. Thanks to the web, Justin's world, as he put it himself, got very big, very fast. Justin's success, uh, how would I describe him now? Forget Beatlemania, uh, you've got uh, Bieber Phenomenon. <laughs> Everybody knows about the Bieber, thanks to the internet as well, it's fans. 
love him quite literally to death, seriously. With the release of Never Let You Go, Justin's reputation was sealed as one of the most popular artists of the new millennium. Never Let You Go was another huge hit, over 150 million hits on YouTube. Lyrics like, it's like an angel came by and took me to heaven. Baby, when you're with me, it's like an angel came by. Oh. not gonna love that, want to think that's about her. It's sweet. <laughs> Bieber fever scorched around the world, with Australian police even cancelling an outdoor gig by the young star at Sydney's Channel 7, pronouncing it too dangerous for hysterical fans. It took a brave decision by the police to call this off, but they simply say they had no other choice. It was too dangerous, the crowd too big and not enough control. For some of his army of young fans, the disappointment was too much to bear. I wish it was better organised because I've been waiting for this day. People were getting trod on and girls were falling and suffocating because they couldn't breathe. The no-show had an angry crowd. But eventually Justin did appear live in Channel 7's studio and the fans waited patiently to catch a glimpse of the world's most famous teen idol. Outside, they couldn't hear a note, so they sang for themselves. Even that caused chaos, police plucking a number of girls from the crowd. At this moment in time, worldwide, Justin Bieber is the biggest pop star on the planet. There's nobody even close. He's incredibly talented, but girls ultimately really fancy him. Everyone that talks about him, they just say, but he's so cute. There's an awful lot that makes Justin Bieber the perfect teen idol. If you like, the circumstances around him created the perfect storm for him just to be catapulted into this huge global superstar. He had the basics, the look, the floppy hair, which is really trendy, really cute, but more than that, he was this guy who was living the dream. Girls could identify because he was just in his bedroom like the guy next door. The Believers and the Bieberettes are phenomenal fans. I mean, they really are. They are true, true fans in the sense that they follow Justin's every move. Suddenly, he's uh, elevated to become everybody's boyfriend. I think that's the thing about him is that he tweets to his fans all the time. He's very, he's very much in contact with all the time and he makes it clear to them that they could be the one that would become his next girlfriend. They think about him all the time, they write about him all the time, they dress, they dress up for him, they make things for him, they bake for him. I mean, really, he does have an incredible fan base. With Justin's lightning rise to stardom, both Usher and Scooter decided to build a protective ring around the teenager. Team Bieber was to become a major force within the business. Justin has got a brilliant team around him, and I think he needs that as well. He's so young, um, and this little team, they all get on so well, and Justin's very aware of the fact he's protected as well. Coming from a small town with a small family and a tight-knit community, Justin's mom was very concerned that the music industry would eat him up and spit him out. She said to Scooter, you look after my boy, and she's very much involved with making sure she knows everyone, the team around him. She knows the voice coach, the stylist, the managers, the A&R guys. She knows them tightly, trusts them, and knows that they want the best for her son. Team Bieber is a very tightly knit group. It's been very carefully orchestrated by Scooter, who is well aware of the fact that Justin needs to have people around him who are going to be strong influences. They're not going to let him get away with anything, but also that Justin likes and kind of learn something from. Uh, Scooter Braun is basically, you know, Colonel Parker to Justin Bieber's Elvis. He's thrown his, his whole life into this world. He is Team Bieber. Justin is, you know, is kind of his creation, really. He started out um, putting on, putting on uh, parties and shows that when he was at college at Emory University in Atlanta. And he would get connections with Eminem. Ludacris, uh, you know, he was involved with all those hip hop people, and you know, obviously the king of Atlanta, you know, at the time, Usher Raymond, also known as Usher, and uh, that was his big break. So he, you know, dropped out, left, and uh, started 
Working with Usher as his manager and, you know, getting a deal together with Def Jam and, um, you know, starting their own music group. And, you know, he was looking on YouTube and, you know, it goes back to the whole thing, you know, what Colonel Parker said about Elvis. You know, I got this, uh, got this white kid who can, you know, sing like he's black. And, you know, that's what they heard with Justin Bieber, you know. He's singing Neo so sick. It's like, okay, this guy has this voice. You know, you put two and two together and hey, let's see what we can do. And, you know, lo and behold, like, became pretty much the YouTube story of 2008 through 2009, this guy. He sees it as very important that Justin has a lot of structure. He doesn't want people to just tell Justin what Justin wants. He's actually said that he's sacked someone before for, for pandering to Justin's needs. And he doesn't want Justin to turn into, you know, into a brat, into a diva. So he's doing everything he can to make sure he stays on the straight and narrow. Justin gives, you know, a ton of credit to Scooter uh, for putting everything together. You know, in his words, he calls uh, Scooter Braun a beast, you know, the brains of the operation. Yeah, beyond that, you know, he has his vocal coach. Obviously, his mother is still there following in her skinny jeans and high heels the whole time. Justin's mom is a really young, cool mom. You know, she's only in her early 30s, and she's very fun, she's young, she's attractive. She's not at all a, a typical kind of stage mom that you might expect. What's great about Patty, though, is that she really doesn't take anything from her son. I love the fact that she travels with him, and recently they got in a big argument, and she told Justin, give me your phone, and when he refused to hand over his mobile, she went and called the uh, mobile cell phone provider and canceled his phone contract. She was absolutely not gonna take it from him, and he had to say, actually, I have no cell phone at the moment. My mom canceled my phone. Meanwhile, you know, Usher's trying to call, music producers are trying to call, nobody can get a hold of him, but his mom just said, look, I've had enough, and you don't deserve a cell phone. I love the fact that Patty keeps him on a very short leash. She, she does not want this out of control, wild Britney Spears type of child, and she's done everything she can to make sure that doesn't happen. There's a DJ called Kenny who um, was a friend of Scooter's and Justin really took a shine to him and really liked him. So Scooter seeing this and thought this is going to be quite a, you know, a good person to have in Justin's life. So he found a role for him in Team Viva. So he sent Kenny off to get trained as a bodyguard. So Justin's bodyguard, who is now a fully trained, fully um, up to speed on what he needs to do, is actually a friend who he knew and he trusted and is now fulfilling this role. Very, very smart on the part of Justin's management to surround him once again with people he trusts. You know, you see it, like for example, when he was backstage at the Grammys this year, his people are around him at all times. Again, you know, because he is younger, I think they do a very good job at, I don't want to say isolating him, but they do a very good job at surrounding him. You know, obviously it's something where it's almost like, for example, child actors who have to be homeschooled. You know, they have to have a certain amount of time on the set. You know, for Bieber, a lot of this is his education is just in a very different medium. It's in dealing with the media, it's in dealing with the publicity, it's in dealing with everything that comes around him, and you see that from the bodyguards, and, and you see a different rapport, the way that they watch out for him. I don't want to say babysitter, but definitely there's a sort of guardianship role. All along, Usher has been a major influence on Justin. A one-time teen idol himself, he's helped Justin navigate his newfound world and cope with his millions of fans. Obviously, Usher still plays a huge role in, um, you know, not only dictating musical direction, but, you know, just kind of, I guess, ease Justin in between where he stands possibly right now as, like, a teen idol and, you know, like what Usher used to be, what Justin Timberlake used to be, and what can lead to longevity. Usher, one of the coolest laid-back guys ever. Seriously, nothing phases him. And again, just a genuine, lovely guy. Well, you know, having um, that type of talent, it was destined to happen. And I just really wanted to be a positive influence to lead him in the right direction. And uh, it worked, you know? Uh, true talent is what matters in the end. And uh, he has it, tonight it's gonna showcase that. Usher's like a, like a big brother to me. He, we hang out all the time, he takes me go-karting, we play basketball, um, just regular things. Usher's just been involved from sort of a mentor standpoint. I mean, obviously Scooter Braun has been sort of the business model, but Usher has been, if you look at the One More Time video. Yo, Usher. The video starts off with him calling Usher, 
and Usher makes a cameo in the video. And it's actually a really clever video because basically it keeps him as a little kid while at the same time giving that credibility. JB, what's up, man? I'm just playing video games with Ryan. You think you can hold the house down until I get back? Yeah, I can do that. All right, my man. Basically like a little three minute teen movie, you know, that every kid would probably dream of getting to party in Usher's house. Usher's influence on Justin, I would say quite strong. They both kind of share similar family values. Usher's a big family man. Uh, Usher's very religious as well, as is Justin. Obviously went to a Catholic school, brought up by uh, very religious grandparents and a mother as well. And they just seem to work together. With Team Bieber behind him, Justin has gone on to become one of the fastest selling music stars ever. On Somebody to Love, Justin and Usher's duet showed a real R&B leaning. The track hit all the right notes in interweaving pop and urban R&B and proved yet another sensational hit for Justin Bieber. Somebody to Love was the song that Justin worked on with Usher, who was obviously mental to him in, in many ways, very important to his career. And actually, that was the, the song that he's come closest to crossing over into the adult market. I, I, promise, girl, I, swear. I think one of the reasons why he's so popular is because he sort of gravitated towards the right genre of music. This is what's popular right now. It's very R&B leaning and uh, it's urban and that's what's selling. Usher style song and it was the sort of song that actually you'd get some people in their 20s listening to rather than just teenagers so I think that's going to be the direction that he probably moves down now. Justin has also made music history by becoming the first ever artist to have seven songs from a debut album in the US charts. He broke records, he was the youngest male solo artist to go straight to number one, apart from, I think it was Stevie Wonder in the, in the 60s. So he's turned into this incredible phenomenon. There is no doubt that Justin could be in danger of overexposure as his global fame reaches new heights. And inevitably with that, the critics get ready to have a go. The critics' view of Justin Bieber is very mixed. Some people think things have come too easily and that he won't have a long-lasting career. Others just say, well, hold on. Look at the evidence so far. Look how many YouTube hits he's had. Should we not be praising this guy because he's an example of coming from nothing, not needing any money to get noticed, and being absolutely huge? And he didn't go about the reality TV way show of doing it. So the people who criticize him for being manufactured are wrong because he didn't go through that whole reality TV route of doing things. He had a mum who didn't have much money who put him on the internet. Come on, I think we should be applauding what she did and what he's been able to do. Other big names in the music industry are convinced that this kid is here to stay. In certain circles of people that are slightly more seasoned than 12 to 16, uh, it would be, it could be said that Justin Bieber is just a little cute guy who, you know, does a little kitty pop music and in a couple years he's going to get older and his voice is going to change and people are going to forget about it. That could be said. However, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think that that kid has some real talent. I think that he can sing. Uh, I know that he can play a couple instruments. I think that, uh, that we have yet to see the best of little Mr. Justin Bieber. So watch out for that dude. Once somebody gives him some like really tangible records, the kind you know, the kind of records that stick, that stay around, I think he could be a force to be reckoned with. I personally feel he's definitely doing his thing right now. I mean, it's it's it's. I'm not by no means am I counting him out for what he's doing, but I mean, you know, it's a 12 year old girl. When he starts getting a little older, like 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 check for Justin at 19. Okay, so Justin. let's say five minutes time, your your cell phone rings. It's Justin. He mm -hmm. says, Neo. I want to write a song with you. I think we could. I think we could get a, a number one hit. Will you do it? I said, let's go. Let's go. Me at the studio. I'm at X Y Z A B C. I see you there in ten minutes. 
some people won't like Bieber because of the music he brings out and that he's so young and that he's got a mass of screaming fans everywhere he goes. Some people won't like that because they're just not into that. Other people will listen to his music, they'll respect what he does and they'll, they'll think he's amazing. It, it depends on what side of the fence you're on, really. With his launch on the World Wide Web, Justin Bieber may well have become a teen superstar faster than anyone else in history. But he's also had far less time to adjust to living in a bubble and the hysteric adulation from many of his fans. At a young age, being 15 and going through this process has been fun. Um, and I mean, I miss my friends and family back home, but this is, this is definitely all worth it. When you look at fans' reaction uh, to Justin, and there were some recent uh, fans in Copenhagen who were like hysterically screaming that hit the internet some footage. And you know, you look, it's like the Beatles or Elvis Presley or something. I mean, they were like crying and screaming and having this reaction to him. Um, and it's a lot for a 16-year-old guy, you know, to take on board. For Justin at the moment, you know, the major pressures on him at the moment are making sure he keeps himself as grounded as he possibly can. And it appears that he has a very strong team around him who are making sure they give him the love, support that he needs in order to keep himself as hooked to reality as he possibly can be, given the unreal life that he's living. There's the pressure on this kid. He's a worldwide star. Everyone's watching. Everyone's looking for something wrong, something negative. Every move he makes is under scrutiny. He's not allowed to be truly human in the way that we understand what it is to be a human being. Well, we have a need not just to make mistakes, but we also have a need for privacy. We have a need to be something that the world doesn't necessarily want us to be. And those are the pressures that he faces. What you have with Justin Bieber is, you know, someone who's made a top-selling movie, top-selling album. I mean, any sort of any sort of you know metric in which you want to measure pop culture success, Justin is at the top of it. And you know, with that comes a lot of criticism, comes a lot of God only knows danger, you know, whether it's drugs, whether it's death threats, whether it's you know insane fans. Every single danger that ever existed in the history of you know pop culture teen stardom is available to bring Justin Bieber down. Well, I spent some very, very interesting times with Justin. I've, I've, I've met him both in the UK and America, but the most interesting time was when I actually got to follow him on the road when he was traveling around Florida. It did just make me realize what it's like to be in the Justin Bieber bubble. I mean, it is crazy. Even when he went in for the sound check at some of the stadiums during the day, there would be thousands and thousands of girls outside and they would somehow work out and manage to pinpoint which part of the stadium he was in. So say he walked past a window, within about 20 seconds there would be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of teenage girls literally pressing themselves against the window and actually causing potentially huge risks to themselves as well. And it just shows the level of hysteria that there is, particularly in Heartland America for Justin. Fans that are grabbing at him and trying to touch him every single day of his life does get to him sometimes. And, and even though he's a great guy and everyone likes him, there are moments when he snaps. And I think it, it would be silly not to think about the tremendous pressure he's under. And no matter what he has going for him, there are going to be moments uh, when he loses it. And it has happened and it probably will continue to happen, but hopefully he has the support of people around him uh, that, that'll, that you know, they'll be able to take care of it. He's just one person. He has to carry that whole show. And I remember uh, being in Tel Aviv, you know, he's contracted to perform for 90 minutes and he came, sh he ended up short like 88 minutes. But you have to perform the 90 minutes. So Scooter was basically like, get out there and, fi and finish, like do something. And I was actually thinking about that, like the weight on this kid's shoulders, the fact that he's responsible for those last two minutes, you know, like, or nobody gets paid. Like, imagine being that kid. Obviously, you've got a kid who's living the dream like that. There are going to be elements of him that are going to inevitably turn into a bit of a showbiz monster, I would say, and I, I could see that happening. But at the same time, He's very good with his fans, he's very good with his family, and he's very good with the people around him. So, you know, he seems respectful at this point. I would say that Justin is really just like any teenage kid. 
which is that he hates being told what to do. So does he throw tantrums every now and then? Yes. And, and I asked Scooter Braun about this actually, and he said to me, look, he does throw tantrums, but when he does, we confiscate his mobile phone. We stop him getting his allowance. So at the moment, they are trying to keep him in some sort of teenage bubble. However, he's an adult now. He's got a girlfriend now. He's going to have control of his own money now. So I think that could only last for so long. The biggest problem he's going to have is just he's going to grow up and he's only human. So he's going to want all the things that pop stars want. He's going to want toys. He's going to want cars. So the people around him have to protect him. He, he has to be allowed to grow up. It can't be like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was never allowed to grow up. So they need to give him a certain amount of space, but I'm sure his mother and Scooter will do that. Justin knows that the price of fame can be a high one and that the critics are just waiting for him to trip up. But he's ready for the challenges ahead. There have been some cracks in this very well put together facade that is Justin Bieber. Um, in Australia, not that long ago, Justin was going to perform on a, on a TV show and the stage manager put his hand on Justin's back to kind of guide him to where he was supposed to stand. And according to that stage manager, Justin said, don't effing touch me. And had like a little, um, pop at the stage manager and that guy ended up going on the radio and talking about it and saying he was disappointed that this nice kid would be so rude to him and i think though that what that kind of shows is you know justin like anybody else has a limit of what he can take having been tutored well by team bieber justin has had to learn fast how to work the media and for the most part he takes it all in his stride I thought he had like a really good head on his shoulders. I thought he understood exactly what was going on and he was very aware of the media. Um, I, I want to say he was very media savvy actually because he was kind of charming. And I've heard that from other people who've interviewed him, especially women, that he basically just like flirts with them to the point where they're like, you know, eating out of his hand. And I could see myself going down that road. So as soon as you arrived, you tweeted, and I quote, you love the weather, the accents, the girls, the water, the excitement, the girls, and the girls. I mean, how do you meet girls these days? Is it harder? Uh, no, it's not. It's easier and easier. I'm a huge Bieber advocate, you know? I mean, like, since day one, <laughs> you know? I just think, I think it's great. I think it's what we need right now. We need somebody like that. And I certainly think kids could use somebody like that. But he actually has so much confidence, not in an obnoxious way, but just a lot of confidence and self-assurance. He's really not afraid of anything. So that you asked Rihanna out, is that true? Yeah, I did. That was, it was, a, it was just a joke, but it was funny. We were out for dinner. Um, she signed to the same lab label as me, so we were out for like a label dinner and she, um, I was sitting across from her, I was like, so Rihanna, what are you doing tonight? So what was her reaction? She was really like, she was just laughing. She thought it was the cutest thing. He's so confident with them as well. For a 16 year old, I remember when I was 16, meeting the ladies would be a bit like, whoa. Especially, God forbid if I'd met Rihanna at the age of 16, I wouldn't know what to do, but him, all over it, knew what to do, knew how to woo them, how to make them feel good, chat them up a little bit. He's got a cheeky charm as well. Justin's living every teenage boy's dream being surrounded by some of the world's most beautiful celebrities. Justin Bieber really met his match in terms of uh, using the reality show internet uh, arena in Kim Kardashian. And I think Kim saw this as a great opportunity to kind of jump on the whole Bieber fever phenomenon. There was a photo shoot that was orchestrated between him and Kim Kardashian. They're coming out of the sea, I mean, they're dripping wet. It's like, I remember when that came to our pitch desk and we were just thinking, what the hell are those two doing together? Because, you know, he's in his teens, she was about 30, and he knows the kind of things that are gonna make headlines. So she was photographed with Justin in the Bahamas, looking very loved up and affectionate. There were all kinds of rumors being started about them being in a romantic situation, and Justin even tweeted, you know, look, there's my new girlfriend, Kim Kardashian. He tweeted afterwards, Kim Kardashian is my new girlfriend. And I think <laughs> the poor lady got death threats from all the Bieberettes. They just, you know, they didn't, didn't let her go. I think in the end, he had to say, please leave her alone. So they realized it wasn't, she wasn't actually his girlfriend, but he's very clever. He knows how to name drop. He knows how to talk about the celebrities that the tabloids are writing about at the time. 
A true superstar of the internet, Justin has been breaking boundaries in social networking, and his Twitter following is now regarded as one of the largest in the world. He's embraced Twitter in a way that no other pop star did initially, and he is a force to be reckoned with on Twitter. There was a point where he was the most followed person in the world, even more than President Barack Obama. And I think lately it's actually only been Lady Gaga who has more followers than him. So what that means is, is Justin is just incredibly powerful. Through his mobile phone, through his laptop computer, he can send messages now to over 10 million people. 10 million people who follow his every move, who want to buy his single, who want to go to his movie. So it, it's an incredibly powerful position for him to be in as a young lad. The thing about Justin is that he has this incredible relationship with his fans. It's when like he, I walked up to him, he put his arm around me, I just, I couldn't like, it's so crazy like, he just touched me, he was talking to me, and it was only like t two seconds, but it felt like five minutes, like, oh my God. And I, and I didn't think I would be like this, but <laughs> it's crazy. I just want to say thank you to all my fans. You guys are truly amazing, and it's really a blessing to have you guys, just all your support. And they feel like they're genuinely close to him. They're following his every move on Twitter. I mean, he's constantly trending. Justin Bieber is always up there on Twitter. It was amazing. It took like five seconds though, and I had I was waiting since Wednesday, sleeping over. But I don't know, I love him. <laughs> you can know where he is, what he's doing, how he's feeling. You can see his songs, you can get his videos. You almost feel like you know this kid. Yes, it was very exciting. He even kissed my cheek. Justin's fans are so crazy about him because they really feel like he belongs to them. And then I was like, can I have a hug? And he was like, of course. And like, like he grabbed, coming. he was like, he grabbed my waist and like, oh my God, it was just amazing. I love him so much. <laughs> I think when he released his single, You Smile, the video for that was all about how he actually falls in love with a fan. with their emotions because he actually tweeted you know that's what that song's about and you should smile whenever you think of that because it could be you because my cards are on the table and I'm willing and I'm able you smile and the world lights up you are my world I want to be told that I don't think it's even age dependent I think it's not just the teens it's the mums who think oh this is a nice guy he'd treat my daughter well that's okay Lucy you can listen to Justin Bieber. you smile I think You Smile has been the song which connected in the same way that one of his earlier singles, Baby, did. At his concerts, it's one of the favourites. It's a very positive and uplifting song. It almost has a Disney-type message to it. Smile. But despite all the success, Teen Bieber pushed the boundaries even further with the release of the motion picture Never Say Never in 2011. The movie followed a 10-day countdown to one of Justin's biggest performances at Madison Square Garden. Few musical artists have ever released a film, and it was a gamble that really paid off. To date, Never Say Never has grossed nearly $120 million and counting. Releasing Never Say Never was dynamite in terms of marketeering for Justin Bieber. I thought the movie was like awesome and inspiring and really well done and you know something that you might have maybe came into it with a little bit of like hesitation and you walked out like completely just devout. I mean it really it was really well done. I think it would be tough for anyone to have cameras come into your life so we had a little rough patch in the beginning but I think when we started it, I was like, listen, I'm not going to do a reality show here. We don't want this to be cheap, and I don't want you to act out scenes for me. I want you to be real. I want you to be honest the way you are. And I think once we got past that, it was all good. He let me in. It was like almost famous. I got to hang out with him in the bus with my camera, sleep with, uh, sleep in the bus, uh, and, and hang out with him at odd hours and just talk about life. So 
And all of a sudden, these girls felt, and it very much had the feel, they were being let into his heart, let into his bedroom, seeing his rise from zero to hero, and they watched him every step of the way. So you really got to experience his life because you hung around with him so much. Yeah, I and mean, how yeah. is it living the Justin Bieber life? What does he go through as a star? It's insane. I mean, it showed me that, you know, there's no such thing as uh, overnight success, that he works his butt off every day. He doesn't just appear on a magazine. He has to fight for that. He doesn't just get fans like this appearing. He has to fight for every single one, and he understands that. So. It's funny, my 13-year-old niece uh, you know, claimed to not be a fan because it wasn't cool. She went and saw the movie. She went and saw it twice. Oh, my friend just wanted to see it. That's why I had to go see it again. But it, it became an event for kids. It became something that they had to do. And it was incredibly moving when you saw what he had come from. And it was actually all manufactured by his people. So it wasn't a documentary exposing him. It was a documentary showing the nicest possible side. That's a marketer's dream. Many of Justin's celebrity fans turned out for the London premiere of the movie. So this was supposed to be a little surprise. I, wasn't, I was supposed to come and see him backstage, say, hi, Justin, how are you? So I to say you're in town and I didn't expect to meet on the carpet. But he's a very humble, modest human being who's handling the craziest of success. I mean, he's the biggest artist in the world right now. Period. So it was nice to kind of meet him, no? He's very smooth. He's a smooth operator. He was sitting at his table, kind of, look at him, look, taking his jacket off. He's cool, man. He's a cool kid, and he's just living his dream. And if he's inspiring all these people, then he can't be doing anything wrong. I think he has to just em embrace, the, embrace the moment, because for all the advice you can give, and he's got Usher, who's mentoring him as well, who's someone who knows the game inside out. It's a great, great management team. You can't buy that. People, that's a quality you either born with. You can't teach that to someone. I'm excited. My fans are really supportive, really amazing, and uh, hopefully they. I wish all of them could come in, but uh, you can't let everyone in. What can they expect from the film? What will they get? They can to see expect just a great time and uh, very inspirational time. I mean, one, I think you can have a really good time if you go with your friends. You go with people that don't like Justin Bieber, don't know anything about Justin Bieber, or know everything about Justin Bieber and love him. I think everyone's going to have a good time, and and they're going to come out at the very least respecting what he does. So. Justin has never been short of female admirers, but his relationship with actress Selena Gomez really got the columnist pens twitching. They officially came out as a couple at the Vanity Fair Oscars party in March 2011, and hearts were broken all around the world. Very interesting, his relationship with Selena Gomez. They definitely did try to keep it under wraps for a while, and I think that was because of a genuine fear of how Justin's teenage girl fans would react, not only against Justin, but against poor Selena, who has become a bit of a hate figure in some quarters because of their relationship. Poor Selena Gomez, at one time she was the most hated girl in the world because all his young fans were sending her hate mail and death threats because they feel they have a belonging, not just a belonging, but own Justin Bieber. When you know somebody's backstory as well as we know Justin Bieber's, you feel that you have a right to their life. So when Selena Gomez comes in, this gorgeous girl, who's a little bit older, a vixen, trying to poison him and steal his heart, Poor girl, she'll get stones thrown at her when she goes outside. Over the last few months, a decision was made that there was no point trying to keep it quiet anymore. They were packed, for example, by photographers on the beach together in quite intimate poses, actually. I think I definitely found it weird when I, when I saw those pictures for the first time and had to make a decision about whether to publish them or not, because while they are both adults, they still seem very, very young to be cavorting on the beach together. So he's had to be very careful in giving little snippets of them being together, you know, going out to an award show and wearing matching outfits and a kiss on the cheek. But he's not been seen groping her and snogging her because that wouldn't be true to his Christian boy beliefs. But also, I think he wants Selena to remain alive. Well, that sort of thing can, like, cynically be seen as, like, an arranged marriage, so to speak. You know, you get the feeling the two, like, actually kind of like each other. Like, because, I mean, like, how many people can really relate to Justin Bieber or Selena Gomez? I mean, you have to think about that. It's not just, like, a thing of convenience. It's more just, like, 
you know, what can you talk about with Justin Bieber, you know, considering the life he lives. They've been to events together. They, they have walked the red carpet together at the Vandy Fair Oscar party. And, you know, there were some really cute moments at the VMAs this year with the two of them. Selena Gomez was like the special correspondent for MTV. And of course, everyone knew she was going to have to interview her boyfriend, Justin Bieber. And just before they did the interview, actually, I was like standing just a few feet away. He had brought his snake with him to the VMAs, to the red carpet, and his snake was named Johnson. And <laughs> her first reaction to seeing him, because she hadn't seen him until that point, apparently, was, why did you bring him to the carpet? It was such a cute, like, couple-y moment, you know, that wasn't on tape and it didn't air, but, you know, I just happened to catch it. And I just thought that was like, wow, they're like a real couple, where the girlfriend would be like, why the hell did you bring that with you? It really helps kind of humanize him, I would say, that to have this sort of high-profile relationship that doesn't seem like, you know, it doesn't seem to have the uh, combustive thing going on that, like, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears had back in the day. They seem, you know, really, like, in love and into each other and, and, and clearly not afraid to show it, which I think is really refreshing. By all accounts, their relationship is very serious. As for how long it continues, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure because... They both have crazy lifestyles, and balancing those lifestyles, I reckon, is going to prove tricky. For the most part, Justin keeps his feet pretty firmly on the ground, but privately, he does like taking risks. He was in Hawaii not too long ago, and he and a bunch of friends went to the top of a cliff, and they were going to dive into the water, and there was a lot of hemming and hawing who would go first. Next thing you know, Justin jumps into the water. He is fearless when it comes to life. Justin also proved what a brave kitty could be when in November 2009, he opened for Taylor Swift at Wembley Arena in London. He was excited because it was the biggest audience he'd ever performed in front of but disaster was just around the corner. There's a very telling story about Justin. When he was in London backing Taylor Swift, who was in a concert, there were something like 12,000 people there. And just before he went on, Justin broke his foot. But to his great credit, he didn't say a word. He went on stage, did his entire set, including his dancing with a broken foot before he could go backstage and get it set and get some medical treatment. He still went on and did a show, which is incredible. It shows he's a real professional. I like that about it, because the show must go on, no matter what happens. With me, just get on that stage. This is your job, you have to do it. But he wanted to do it, and that's a fantastic thing. And I think that says a lot about this individual. At such a young age, to be such a good sport, such a determined young performer, and um, not in any way a diva or you know throwing some kind of fit, he, he deserves some credit for that. I think Justin, like Taylor Swift, he's a great role model, because Taylor is just, she's just the perfect pop star as well. She's the female, he's the male. They are the perfect pop star. If they ever get together and have kids, it would be amazing. And Justin further highlighted his close relationship with Taylor when they collaborated on his recent album, Believe. And in late 2011, the duo performed together on Taylor's LA leg of her Speak Now tour. In June 2012, Justin released his latest album, Believe, and he had lots to say about it. I believe in, um, you know, myself. I believe um, in my dreams. I believe that, um, you know, in God. I think that, um, you know, the title Believe is so inspiring, and I think a lot of people are going to be able to just, you know, say, what do I believe in? And, you know, it gives them, you know, hope and inspiration, and, and I think that that's really special. So what is it that makes Justin Bieber the perfect teen idol for the 21st century? Interviews he gives shows that he has a heart, and he wants to find the right girl, and he'll treat them well. And every single little girl out there is like, please let it be me, let it be me. They love him. He's completely tenacious. He's very good looking. He's got that raw talent which he needs. He's completely ambitious. It, I mean, it comes down to one thing, which is just drive. And he, he sings amazingly as well. He has got a brilliant singing voice. And the songs he sings about are very relatable as well. And, and that all together just makes Little Bieber awesome. Partly luck, what he has, his talent as well, but also he manages it well, which is really clever considering he's so young. He kind of seems like this kid who was meant to do one thing and one thing only. 
make music. He knew that's what he wanted to do. To get to that level of success, you just have to want it that badly. Because if you look at everything that comes with it, man, there's a lot that comes with it. Justin Bieber as a pop culture phenomenon is fascinating, you know, whether or not you've heard a single note of his music. He is such a talented little dude. He was playing the drums since he was two, uh, the guitar, the piano. Young people identify with him, boys and girls, and they all want to be like him because he sings and he dances. I think the next 10 years are going to be crucial for Justin because it's crunch time really about whether he is going to be able to move on from being a teen idol to a bona fide pop star. Now obviously there are many examples in the past of this not happening so I think of Hanson and Donny Osmond and David Cassidy and teen idols like that who never really managed the transition into adult pop star but I think Justin has a better chance because I think he has the backing so the celebrities love him. He's best mates with Kim Kardashian and Katy Perry and Justin Timberlake. He has the backing of Hollywood and the industry. Who knows, do I think he'll still be relevant in 10 years? If I had to bet money on it, I would bet yes. Justin Bieber's not gonna be just a singer. Like, if, you know, which is not to denigrate what he does as a musician, but for him, the music may not always be there. You know, the movies will be, you know, the TV stuff. The big question is, can Justin Bieber be Justin Timberlake? And I think the answer is yes. I think Bieber will go on to be a movie star. And I think that's where he will find his money and fame when he's 40, 50, 60.